Hi, I'm Joe and super awesome to be here today. So when someone told me about workflow engines and things like BPMN and tools like Kamunda many years ago, I was like, what the? I use if statements and things like that to control the execution flow of my program. Why do I need a workflow engine? And oh boy, was I naive back then. So let's talk about it. I'm Johannes Frey, but you can simply call me Joe, and I've been working as a software engineer for more than 15 years, and I switched to data science and data engineering about four years ago. And I'm here to share with you the few little things that I picked up along the way. Well, what is a workflow engine? A workflow engine helps you to orchestrate the many different parts that you use, for example, for a data processing pipeline. So maybe you need to make an API call to retrieve some data. Then this data needs to be stored, then when this data is stored, you maybe need to trigger a Spark job to actually transform the data to make it readable for your, let's say, machine learning model. Then after that, you need to trigger the retraining of your machine learning model. And then when all is said and done, maybe you also need to trigger some automatic evaluation and so on and so forth. And all those steps, they kind of consist of various different services. Like for example, the API call, could be a cloud function or an AWS Lambda. As I said, the data transformation could be done by a Spark job. The uh, retraining of the machine learning model could be done with some sort of another web service using TensorFlow. And somehow you need to chain those things together. And also you need to take things like error handling, retries, gracefully failing, and so on and so forth into account. And this is basically um, where the workflow engine comes to your help and helps you to solve those problems. Back in the intro, I said like, yeah, I control my program flow with if statements and such. But a workflow engine then helps you to control the execution flow of many programs, right? It's kind of an overarching thing. And also an uh, important thing to notice or to note is that a um, workflow engine only helps you orchestrate infrastructure or services that are already in place. So it won't create those for you. So first of all, you need to create, for example, the cloud function that does the API call. You need to create the Spark script or the Spark job. You need to create the retraining job. And then after that, the workflow engine helps you to tie everything together and make it work smooth together. But before we go into talking about why you really should consider using a workflow engine, please go completely insane on that like button. That would really help me a lot. So let's talk about some reasons why you really should consider using a workflow engine. Data processing pipelines are rather complex and you need something to manage in a sane way all this complexity and tie everything smoothly together. And this is exactly what workflow engines are for. Workflow engines usually provide a graphical representation of your workflow. And all of the workflow engines that I worked with, uh, or even while the workflow is running, will show you graphically what step is currently in execution. So you know exactly what's going on. And for another very important point that I can't stress enough and that gets often overlooked, is that workflow engines provide very sophisticated error handling and mechanisms like uh, retries. You can also group many steps into like some sort of container and then have those be retried whenever one single step of them fails. So it has like many, many possibilities. And yeah, so the error handling part is like really good and you will miss those things if you try to build something like that yourself. So why should you reinvent the wheel? And as I just said, there are other ways to also accomplish this chain of process steps. Like for example, on AWS and on GCP, there are, for example, triggers that you can trigger things when, for example, files get stored into the cloud storage. Yeah, the thing with that is that you lack the graphical representation about what's actually going on. So you need to get into the system, have a look, what triggers are defined, where do they belong to, and so on and so forth. And the most important thing is that you don't actually have proper error handling. So you need to build everything yourself. And I mean, why should you make your life more difficult than it needs to be if there are already solutions for those problems? Just use them. And even though I don't talk about one specific workflow engine, there are many workflow engines to choose from. Some which I used are, for example, Airflow, GCP Workflows, 
and AWS step functions. And all of those, even though they are slightly different, have a somewhat similar feature set and basically help you to solve the same problems. So what are some of those features that those workflow engines actually bring you, right? I already talked a lot about error handling, so that one obviously, but then again, you can also, for example, create usually sub processes. So where you can group various different steps together and make that kind of like a component that you can then reuse and parameterize for uh, yeah, further use cases. Then usually you also have things like uh, loop processing where you can feed the workflow engine an array and it will start the next steps for each of those elements in that array. And also you can run usually things in parallel where you again provided with some array or something like that. And then it will start kind of like separate processes for each entry simultaneously, or you can parameterize and tell them how many parallel uh, yeah, flows it should start. And where you usually have some sort of forking, like parallelism, you usually also have some sort of joining them back together to get one single result out of them. So this is also usually supported by workflow engines. And of course you can also control workflows with conditions. You can check whether the output of one step meets some certain condition. And if so, you can choose this execution path. And if not, you can choose that execution path. And also workflow engines usually come with connectors to the most yeah, used uh, services or, or tools. So for example, most workflow engines have connectors that help you to run Spark jobs. Maybe there are connectors that where you can ingest data from Kafka and so on and so forth. So all those kind of state of the art and generally used tools usually have rather good yeah, connectors to those workflow engines and it's rather easy to use them. So now, yeah, everything sounds cool and so on and so forth, but how do you actually configure that? Is it some graphical user interface? Is it some coding that you need to do? Well, as I said earlier, a workflow engine basically helps you orchestrate code or services or programs or tools that are already in place. So you already need to have some cloud functions in place. For example, you need to already have some uh, Spark jobs in place. And then basically, um, so the tools that I use so far usually have some sort of a configuration using YAML, where you just specify the order in uh, which those steps should occur. You can specify, as I said, the error handling. You can use the connectors to the different other um, tools and everything is usually neatly done with YAML. So, and it's also, it's not that complex and it's actually quite good to use. So at least the tools that I have been using so far. So I hope I could raise some awareness for workflow engines and that you might be inclined to maybe give it also a try and to see whether that will improve your life, whether it will um, bring you some benefits in your daily uh, project work. If so, it would be super awesome if you could leave a like and go completely insane on that subscribe button. So far, so good. See you in the next one. Bye.